Greetings. Um, I was asked a question about the NPCs and them committing suicide, and I said I'd hold off to answering it because it's relevant to the topic of this video. So to answer the question of what happens to NPCs, as I've said before, if you think of this realm being like a diagnostic cube for a greater universe, so everything, basically the expression is man goes against nature and tries to improve upon nature, it's testing out creation basically. So to answer the question as to the NPCs, the way I look at this is you have this diagnostic zone, this reality. And within that reality you have, shall we say, your control um, markers. In this particular case, a certain section of what appear to be human beings that are part of this matrix that sort of go along with all the narratives as given. Um, sort of your perfect good little citizen that will moan about things but just be fairly complacent and roll over and do whatever it's told. And this I feel is what the NPCs are a part of. A subject that's come up on a few videos I've watched lately on, on various channels has been the Mandela Effect. Personally, the way I remember things is like trying to remember a dream. And all I'm actually left with more is the emotional markers oh yeah, I remember that feeling and I can't remember the details of the scenario the when or where but I have a recognition of that emotion without that emotion then sort of hijacking hijacking a vessel and taking control of it and running amok uh, So, I experienced something on Friday um, that is very much fits in with that whole Mandela effect. I looked at the time on the phone and it said 10, it was showing 10.58. Five minutes later, I, was, I couldn't remember what it showed exactly at the time. I thought, what, what was the time again? So I looked again, and now it's displaying 10.38. So it's gone back by 20 minutes. And that is somewhat unsettling in oneself, as did I imagine it? Did I dream it? Did I missee the numbers? And maybe I'd seen 10, 28, and in the mind it had flipped it to a 5. It gives a, fe a feeling of uncertainty to everything. And you start to question your own sanity with it. And I feel a lot of what these, what seem to be very trivial things in these Mandela effects, I have to ask what it's doing to the overall collective human psyche. If it's putting that sort of feeling where you start really questioning yourself, but flipping that over, is that not what spirituality and what is called the long night, the dark night of the soul is all about? It's about going within, um, really digging deep and questioning yourself why did I feel this way about this or and so on 
and addressing those things we sort of buried and don't want to face normally because it's a very uncomfortable feeling to face these things. And I, I feel that's maybe what the periphery level of these things, like when something changes in a film and you're adamant that you, and you remember it as being this particular thing, but now when you look at the film, it's changed. Now I've heard that it's almost retrospective. So if you were to watch an old VHS video of say Back to the Future, the one that readily comes to mind, it was a Mazda van, this terrorist van in this film. But subsequently, it's now a Volkswagen camper. Now, if I remember rightly, the Volkswagen camper stopped production and then restarted production, and the newer ones look, have got more of a plasticky look, for want of a better word, about the, the, the bit of front grille on them, for example. They look distinctly different. The older ones, particularly old ones, have like the chrome hubcaps and things. By the time you get to the, the ones in the 70s, there, there's a stylistic change in the bodywork on them and it's changed slightly again with the more recent production. And this one in the film looks to be more one of these recent ones. Now, I'm pretty certain it was blue, a light blue bottom half and a cream top half. Now funny thing is, I have an idea that the Mazda van was red, but I can't be certain. It's like trying to remember a dream, it's gone. It's vaguely there is the best I can. But it's so hazy, I can't be, can't put hand on heart and say it definitely was now with that. The only thing I can remember, it was a Mazda van because of the sort of ungainly sort of bumper on the front of it made it distinctive. It, to me it spoilt the look of the van. <coughs> so it, it's showing there's a sort of fluidity. Now if anybody has got an old copy of a film where you know there has been this Mandela effect, if you could leave a, in the comments whether that video has changed and you're seeing the updated version in an old video or whether the old video it's still the same because I've heard this about physical objects have actually changed retrospectively. But what does it tell you about this reality? And that's the other part. Um, it's a personal experience because that's the only thing I can go with. Now, I've experienced in I can't remember how long it is, it's, but it's fairly, let's say it's fairly recent anyway. I have lost three very good friends. I didn't speak to constantly, but from time to time we'd communicate directly through Messenger. And I'd see them in Facebook comments and posts and things. All three of them have left this physical plane. Um, in layman's terms, they've died. But they haven't died because I've felt their presence in this very room. There's been times where I can shut my eyes and they're here. Now, part of me is feeling a sense of loss with this. A sadness. And now, in the last few days, um, Claire and Stephen are sort of moving away, going on an adventure. And I wish them the best of luck and fantastic. It's left a sort of a feeling of a hole, a feeling of loss. And this is where I stopped and thought, I thought, hold on, I've experienced three, the loss of three friends. Okay, only through Facebook. One of them I, I, I did meet personally in the physical sense. The other two not. But, and now with Stephen and Claire moving away, I thought, hold on, what is the universe presenting to me here? Don't just feel the, the loss, the negative thing. What's it showing me? 
it's showing me something. I need to look at this. I need to examine this. I need to internalize how I'm feeling and why I'm feeling this. And what has come out of this is comes back to this whole fluidity of this reality because I cannot tell you any distinction in that feeling of loss. Now, with Stephen and Claire, obviously, this social media, there is a way to communicate. So it's a physical loss in the sense of proximity in this solid reality, but there is no loss. And on the whole, the internet's pretty instant, so messages and things will come through in, shall we say, real time. Um, can't help hearing real and seeing it being spelt R double E L like a film reel. Because like I say, I cannot differentiate in the feeling between the two. So to me it is the universe is actually showing me something here, and that is the fluidity of this reality. That it's not as it appears to be in its physical sense but it is far more and it seems to be I mean I'm, I'm still a bit shaken by this 20 minute time jump with the phone because I know I can put hand on heart and say yes I did see 10.58 and then when I looked again it's 10.38 and it's like that's not possible When you start being presented with these other things that are in this physical reality but are not, because I can't say it's exactly in the physical reality when it's just people I know through, say, Facebook, and it's just been communications through social media. Um, but then the, it blurs, those boundaries blur between the physicality and the non-physicality in this reality. So I'm grateful to be sort of opened up to seeing this because I feel this is, is, is very, can be very beneficial to all of you that when something bad or something appears to be bad that is happening, to just that's the time to put the brakes on and don't run with that emotion don't let that emotion take over the vessel and grab a hold of it and control it and steer it. That's the time to drop anchor and just be still and look at it and ask the question to yourself, what is the universe, the exterior realm presenting to me? What is it trying to show me? There seems to be a, a blur in the communication, we're not quite tuned into that station. Ken um, Fioria apotheosis analogy is so brilliant. Um, it, it, it's something I can readily grasp about when we're talking about the broadcast and the radio. And in spirituality, is it not always spoken about, about being attuned, tuning in, being in alignment, vibrating? So I said I'm pretty sure I've said this before that now I'll put it in Jason Archaic's channel terms of the Phoenix event, um, the, fe um, the Phoenix phenomenon, the the apocalypse. Well, look, apocalypse, epoch collapse, end of an age. Now with everything in this, like I can feel the extreme sadness and sense of loss these five soul family but at the same time I can contain that and I can see the other side of it so this Phoenix rising if you're vibrating on the right frequency I feel you have nothing to have any concerns or worry 
anything to worry about. Little prompt there saying the word concern and today today they do this whole concern thing. Um, no, I don't know what it is. I have an ideas of what it might be and what it's trying to do, which I think is change the fabric of this reality to inflict a further frequency distortion on the mass human, well, not just the mass human psyche, the mass life psyche. Um, we got some ridiculous things. Um, Think about nitrogen levels being too high and protests in the Netherlands. But the irony is, I don't know anything about this apart from seeing other channels who have just talked about this. But if I hadn't seen that, I would be none the wiser about it. It wouldn't exist in my reality anyway. Um, it sort of exists there, but doesn't now. Um, Am I going to feel fear from it? No. Am I going? To, can I see that? In some ways, it's the compartmentalized dealings, shall we say? So, put things into boxes. So we're going to have a war on cancer. We're going to find a cure for cancer, but we won't look at the actual source of the cause of it, where deal with just purely the outcome side of it. And this this applies with everything. You've got these compartmentalised reverse speak system manipulated things. So humanity's caught in the crossfire because it is <coughs> very much like dividers. It's all about divide and conquer. So just like the dividers you you'd use on the map, the compasses, shall we say. That's You'll play one side and to keep control, you'll play its opposite. Because this realm is all about balance and always about opposites. It's, it's like a pendulum. It's like the Spanish Inquisition pendulum that keeps coming down and it swings one way and then the other. You've only got to look at, we call it history of, say, the 20th century with the rise of nationalism, the rise of communism, socialism, the off the back of that, you've got another plot of um, extreme toxic masculinity, which then swings to the most toxic femininity. I can't even say the word femininity. Um, and it's swung backwards and forwards and, and keeping people in confusion. It's like, pick a side, but you've got you to jump on the merry-go-ground and, and be pulled along by that ride in this sort of carnival carnival theatre show where well, it might be actually better to just drop anchor and just take time out if you think about it to you and rudolf stein is right on this a third of your life you're not even aware of it's it's segments between the waking and the dreaming states so roughly eight hours, a third of each 24 hour period. It's a different reality. Uh, it's interesting as well when Jason talks about the Phoenix event and how time will be compressed. Maybe that reality, you're kept in conscious awakeness for what will become 16 hours a day, which is a 24 hour day. Who knows? Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, replace the fear with curiosity, I would say, is a, another way to deal with this, and also to internalise everything that affects you personally. The external of where you're in, coming into contact with other soul family, beyond the soul family, what people refer to as the NPCs, your interactions with everything that is external to you and remember that don't keep one perspective on it. If you keep that perspective of loss and sadness then we're like magnets and a magnet it everything sticks to the outside of a magnet which tends to. So you're drawing more sadness towards yourself because we are basically magnetic energy, magnetic energy, electrical, that's with me. 
the physical part, the sort of machine that's the eye of all of us resides in, these vehicles we call human vessels. So it's we've just passed over the solstice and we've, we've got all these planetary alignments and things. See Adrian the Least Channel. Um, I, w I listened to what she says. It confirms, especially that last video in what's just happened. It, it it confirms so much. It's like ah, I may not know where the micro universe of where Jupiter currently sits in Mercury in relation to Mercury and Chiron and everything within this vessel, this human universe within, but it's they're obviously all, all moving about and uh, some of that is going to be down to the chemical changes we create from how we feel and how we think. So it's very much about internalize everything. Because it, the saying is, the answers are all within, we just need to remember. Well, I don't necessarily need, think it needs to be to actually physically, is that the right word? Or mentally remember an event sometime between birth and now. It can be a remembering, as in a rewiring, a creating new neural pathways. How we change our perception, how we then think about things, I would say, creates these electrical circuits in your mind. And like everything in the spiritual, it has a physical outplay. So would it not therefore affect the physical brain construction? some degree whether it would actually show up in a physical form that would be so differentiated maybe with a scan I don't know something doesn't feel right about any of that anyway um, so I would go with that feeling what happens in the next six, seven months? Let's just say I have a hunch that uh, it ain't going to be as bad as it would appear to be. It just depends on your perspective and if you can keep that fluidity of thought and just keep looking at things from all conceivable angles and inconceivable angles. Because it seems another theme I've been shown is going with the Anunnaki story, the Anuna story that Enki did the unthinkable. Is that maybe a clue? Is what is the unthinkable? Is that not about using your imagination? Because it certainly seems very clear to me. I don't need anybody to tell me this. And it doesn't matter if nobody believes this. I know this from experience that I can create my reality by what I put out and what comes back and it's absolutely wonderful. It changes everything. From a material perspective it might not look that great but I'm not seeing it from one perspective. I'm seeing it from multiple perspectives and we're in for some fantastic times, some beautiful times to come, if you can see it from that way, it all depends on how you feel inside, because that is what is going to create it, how you feel and what you radiate out is what creates this reality collectively, you wonder why the weather is so unsettled, <laughs> well is not humanity rather unsettled on so many things? Look at across the board, everything, politics, um, environmental issues, um, issues that, that sort of mean things to people um, if they've just got a material outlook on life. They can have a perspective and put out a feeling which may be very different from people who have a spiritual 
perspective on life. And so, it, is it any wonder we've got uh, erratic weather at times? But that's the way it is. And one by one, it comes down to how we feel. And uh, yeah, there may be something greater than all of us. Certainly looks that way. And I have to agree with Jason. The, the very just from the very fact that there are any channels that are giving personal testimonies, personal perspectives that are saying, hold on a minute, what they're showing you on the news, for example, I've got been sent this or I've got had communication about this which is painting a very different picture. So the actions of this reality, let it, let, it, let it run, let it do its own thing, it's going to run anyway. Don't bother wasting time resisting it in that way. By all means, do point out the non-reality to this reality. Um, those that are meant to hear it are meant to hear it. It may well be that some are just part of the background scene, what are called NPCs, anyway. But I think it's fair to say that if the tide turns enough, that the majority of people would just follow and jump ship because they're used to following anyway. And if they look like the odds are better on this way, then they will, they will run with it anyway. But uh, it comes down to how you personally feel about things and how you allow, whether you allow that to affect you in a positive way or a negative way and wow we've talked for 27 minutes here so that's longer um i didn't think it was going to flow quite like that but it, it, it just run with it I, i'm just a vessel at the end of that i'm just a medium just for, like the artist has a, a canvas and oils and a brush by extension of that, the micro and the macro of that, this physical being you're seeing in front of you is just a channel that what I call the art spirit. Not my term, it's Robert Henry. Um, if you haven't listened to the audio book by this brilliant artist, I'm not wishing to put him on a pedestal, but what he says in the art spirit, if you take it out of the perspective of just seeing it as painting an art, and you look at it in, it in its esoteric and its spiritual message and even about applying it to daily life it just adds because it's not just a pedestal it's a series of pedestals if anything it becomes like a side of a one of these coliseums basically and you've got, I can put a lot of names up there and past and present I would include in that and why not some of it is their creativity, and I recognise that art spirit in what they create, whether it be a video, whether it's they're showing a painting, poetry, writing, music, um, their perception on things. At the end of the day, I'm going to say this is just a fantastic experience. Um, yeah, it's got some awful looking things, and it's got some wonderful looking things, and a lot of grey in between that is neither comes down to personal preference whether you like it or you don't like it. It could be colour of clothes or something as almost nonsensical as that. But uh, yeah, it, this is a wonderful experience and um, go back to the drawing board and just keep that fluidity of thought with everything. Don't fix, don't cement yourself to anything in particular. Um, what really matters? Well, <laughs> is it actually even, does it have a matter, a material to it? Or is it something else? Um, it's walking this two worlds, isn't it? It's sort of being in this world, but not in this world at the same time. And continuously internalizing everything that's presented to us, how we feel about it, weighing it all up, 
how we want to feel out of it as well. That's another aspect of it. You want to keep be looking at something that's going to make you feel upset, depressed, and keep you in that state. Or is, is that really going to benefit you? That's the thing to ask yourself. But of course, benefit you, but not at the, um, what's the opposite of benefit? Um, detriment of another. That's, and another, I don't just mean human, I mean all life. Right down to careful where your step coaches a, an, a, an ant or something. It happens, but if we can keep an awareness and try not, I mean that butterfly effect, I'm open to that idea that even that can have an effect on this reality. Um, I can change my immediate reality by how I feel and I'm seeing that and witnessing and experiencing that, then the potential is enormous with this. So, wow, we've talked for half an hour now, so I'm going to say ta ta for now and love to you all and keep in a high vibration. You'll get through this, you know, walk on water, shall we say. Love to you all.